Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Learn English with Photos. My name is Geoffrey Hill and in this lesson I'm going to be looking at one of the great British institutions, the car boot sale. In the first part of the lesson I'll talk about some photos I took at a car boot sale. Then I'll go over some of the vocabulary. Finally, I'll ask you some questions relating to this topic. The first car boot sales evolved from American trunk sales and garage sales in the early 70s. The story goes that a Catholic priest called Father Harry Clark saw one while on holiday in Canada and thought it would be a good way to raise money for his church in Stockport. He couldn't have imagined that he was starting a craze that would become more popular than the traditional British jumble sale. In fact, Britons today spend over £2.5 million per year at car boot sales, and there are websites listing thousands of sales across the country. There's even a TV game show called Boot Sale Challenge. Of course, it's no coincidence that the number of people wanting to sell their unwanted possessions or find a bargain has risen as the economy has slowed. Car boot sales are often, but not exclusively, held in the grounds of schools and other community buildings, or in grassed fields or car parks. Usually they take place on a weekend, mostly Sundays. Sellers will typically pay a nominal fee of a few pounds for their pitch and arrive with their goods in the boot of their car, hence the name. Usually the items are then unpacked onto folding trestle tables, a blanket or tarpaulin, or the ground. Entry to the general public is usually free, although sometimes a small admission charge is made. Although a small proportion of sellers are professional traders selling goods they've acquired for resale, most of the goods on sale tend to be personal possessions. In fact, car boot sales are quite an environmentally sound idea, as they allow a large group of people in one place to recycle still useful but unwanted domestic items that previously might have been thrown away. Car boot sales generally take place within the summer months, However, there is a growing trend of all-year-round indoor boot sales. As they have proliferated, car boot sales have become more sophisticated. Traders have moved in on the act, so car boot sales have become places to buy furniture, carpets, TVs and even kitchen appliances. I took these photos at a car boot sale in the Stonehouse district of Plymouth, my hometown, in the summer of 2012. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't great, but at least it wasn't raining. As you can see, there's an incredible range of stuff for sale. Everything from attractive statues and glassware to piles of junk. I was particularly interested in the CDs and DVDs and managed to pick up a few bargains. If you're planning to participate in a car boot sale, either as a buyer or seller, it's useful to be aware of a few ground rules. So here are my top tips. If you're selling, you should try and obtain a pitch close to the entrance or to food stalls since these are likely to be the busiest areas. Don't put prices on items. Firstly, it saves time, and secondly, people may pay more than you expect for an item. However, make sure you're aware of how much your more valuable articles are worth. You can visit eBay to get an idea. A few years ago, a vase bought by a woman at a car boot sale in Scotland was sold at auction for over £32,000. If you're selling clothes, use a clothes rail to display them. You should also come equipped with batteries, bags, instruction manuals and plenty of loose change. People love a bargain, so make signs to attract customers such as buy one, get one free or two for the price of one, which in fact amounts to the same thing. Make sure you check the weather forecast and dress accordingly. If the forecast is for rain, which is not impossible in the UK, bring some plastic sheets to protect your goods. And if by any chance it's going to be sunny, don't forget to pack a hat and sun cream. You'll be standing or sitting in the sun all day and risk getting sunburnt. The best hagglers arrive early, so be prepared to bargain and do so with a smile. If you think someone's offer is too low, politely say no and tell them why you feel the item is worth the price you're asking. Finally, if the idea was to declutter, you won't be wanting to take a load of stuff back home with you. So towards the end of the sale, create an everything must go sign and drastically reduce your prices. If you're a buyer, be prepared to haggle. After all, people have come to get rid of their stuff, so they will usually drop their prices rather than take it home again. Come early, that's when you'll find the best bargains. But remember, you won't get a guarantee or a refund, so don't buy anything that isn't intact or might not work. And be friendly, 
it might help you to get that bargain. Well, that ends our visit to the car boot sale. Now let's go over some of the vocabulary we've seen. I'll say each word twice, and you can repeat it after me if you like. I'll also give a definition and make some additional comments where appropriate. The first word is bargain. Bargain. A bargain is something that's good value for money, usually because it's been sold at a lower price than normal. For example, if you buy something in the sales with 70% off, that would be a great bargain. And people also go bargain hunting. Battery. Battery. A battery is a small device that provides electrical power for items such as radio and children's toys. You probably also have a battery in your car. Boot. Boot. In British English, the boot of a car is the space at the back in which you carry things such as luggage or shopping. In American English, they use the word trunk. Buyer. Buyer. A buyer is a person who is buying something in a shop or who intends to buy it. In companies, a buyer is someone who does that for a job. Car park. Car park. A car park is an area where people can park their cars. Note that in English we don't say a parking. Uh, parking is the activity of parking the car, not the place. So you could say, for example, parking is very difficult in central London. There aren't many car parks. Clothes rail. Clothes rail. A clothes rail is a metal bar used for hanging clothes and other things on. Some people find it difficult to pronounce the word clothes, but if you say it fairly quickly, it sounds very similar to close, as in close the door. Furniture. Furniture. Furniture consists of objects such as tables, chairs or beds that you use in a room for sitting or lying on. Note that the word furniture is uncountable, so you cannot say a furniture. You would have to say a piece of furniture. And you can't use the word in the plural. So you would say, uh, my furniture is very expensive, not my furnitures are very expensive. Glassware. Glassware. Glassware consists of objects made of glass, such as bowls, drinking containers, and, of course, glasses. Like furniture, glassware is uncountable, so you would have to say a piece of glassware, and not a glassware. There are other words uh, which use the suffix ware. For instance, there's kitchenware, tableware, and, of course, software and hardware. Haggle. Haggle. If you haggle, you argue about something before reaching an agreement, especially about the cost of something that you're buying. If you're visiting a street market, you might like to haggle over the price of something. Junk. Junk. Junk is old and used goods that have very little value and that you don't want anymore. Once again, the word junk is uncountable, so you cannot refer to a junk. You would have to say a piece of junk. And, of course, the word is not used in the plural. Kitchen appliance. Kitchen appliance. A kitchen appliance is a machine that accomplishes a task in the kitchen, such as a dishwasher or kettle. Loose change. Loose change. Loose change is an expression which refers to the coins of low value which you usually have with you. You might keep them in your purse, for example. Pitch. Pitch. A pitch is a place in a street or market where someone sells things. If you're a seller, you often have to pay to use a particular pitch. Sale. Sale. A sale is an event where goods are sold or people sell things. There are different types of sale. For example, a bring-in-buy sale, a jumble sale... And, of course, the car boot sale. Seller. Seller. A seller is a person who sells something to someone else. Note that in English we don't use the word sailor. A sailor is someone who sails on a ship. Sign. Sign. 
A sign is a piece of wood, metal or plastic with words and pictures on it, usually uh, telling you something important or giving information. No smoking, for example. Statue. Statue. A statue is a sculpture of a person or animal or anything really made of stone or metal which is used as an ornament or for decoration. Trestle table. Trestle table. A trestle table is a table made of a long board or plank that is supported on trestles. Trestles are the wooden or metal structures with two pairs of sloping legs. Very useful for car boot sales and any sort of sale where you have to transport your goods in a boot. Vase. Vase. A vase is a jar usually made of glass or pottery which is used for holding flowers as an ornament. Uh, note that some people say vase. All right, that's um, enough vocabulary. Now let's move on to the questions. I'm going to ask you a series of questions relating to car boot sales. I suggest you stop the recording to give yourself time to answer. OK, let's begin. Question 1. Do you have car boot sales in your country? If so, how do they differ from those in the UK? Question 2. Have you ever been to a car boot sale? If so, what did you buy? If not, would you like to go to one? Question 3. If you went to a car boot sale, what sort of things would you be looking to buy? Question 4. Why do you think car boot sales are so popular in Britain? Question 5. Have you ever sold things at a sale? How much money did you make? Question 6. How do you get rid of your unwanted possessions? Do you recycle them, sell them, or throw them away? Question 7. What's the best bargain you've ever found? And question 8. Do you usually haggle when you visit a sale or a market? Right, that's the end of this lesson. I hope you found it interesting. And I look forward to working with you again on another episode of Learn English with Photos.